Windows PowerShell version 1 primarily relied upon snap-ins to extend the shell. Snap-ins typically required advanced programming knowledge, and snap-ins usually needed to be installed and registered before they could be loaded into the shell. Version 2 continues to support snap-ins, but introduces a new extensibility feature called modules. Many different modules exist, and they can be written both by Microsoft and by third parties. They are added to the shell in the same fashion. Use Import Module to load a module into the current session, and Remove Module to remove a module from the current session. Modules are global, meaning that once they are added, they are available throughout the shell session. When you close your shell window, the module is automatically unloaded and will not automatically reload the next time you open the shell. Modules live in a special folder. System modules are usually installed under C, Windows, System32, Windows PowerShell, V1, Modules, and the Modules subfolder is the name of the module. Within that subfolder are the files that comprise the module. Using these examples, you could run Import Module App Locker to load the App Locker module. That special location is defined in a PS module path environment variable. It also defines a second location in your Documents folder under Windows PowerShell Modules. This enables you to easily copy new modules to your Documents folder without having to modify the folder in the System32 path. You could also modify the PS module path environment variable to define alternate or additional locations. The shell will search each location whenever you try to load a module. You can also load a module by using a complete file path with the import module commandlet. Many modules are installed simply by copying their files into the proper location. Some may require a formal installer or may have prerequisites that are not provided with the module itself. This is especially true for Microsoft authored modules that rely on components in the .NET Framework's global assembly cache. Other requirements may include a minimum version of Windows PowerShell, a minimum version of Windows, and so forth. Many modules come with a PSD1 file, which is a module manifest. The manifest is a list of all the files that a module requires. It can include binary files, such as a DLL file, XML files for formatting or type extensions, PSM1 files for script modules, and so forth. If a manifest doesn't exist, then the shell will look for a single script module or DLL file with the module name and will attempt to load only that file. Manifests work best with binary modules, which can also be packaged as snap-ins, because a manifest allows the module to include supporting files such as formatting instructions for new objects types, type extensions, and so forth. Script modules offer a formal, structured way of reusing scripts and functions. Script modules are also somewhat easier to distribute to colleagues, and they offer the ability to include multiple files, such as formatting views, along with the script module itself. Those additional files must be documented in a module manifest. At their simplest, a script module is simply a normal shell script that has a PSM1 file name extension. There is no special formatting or structure required within the script to make it a module. You should, however, Store the module in one of the predefined locations where the shell searches for modules. To see these locations, run this command. dir env colon slash psmodule path. Typically, you will select a name for your module. For example, my mod. You create a folder with a module name in one of the predefined module path locations, such as documents, windows, PowerShell, Modules, My Mod. You then store your module file in that folder using a file name that consists of the module name and the .psm1 file extension, mymod.psm1, for example. You can then load the module by using the import module commandlet, import module my mod. When you import a module, any aliases, functions, PS drives, or variables defined within the module will become available in the global scope, meaning they will become available throughout the shell. They will remain in the shell until you either close the shell window or until you remove the module by using the Remove Module commandlet. Typically, these script modules should consist entirely of functions, 
and each function will normally be added to the current shell session when you import the module. You may also wish to include new aliases, meaning your script module would contain one or more new alias commands. Here is a simple script module. You'll notice that it doesn't contain anything special. It's just a script with a bunch of functions and a special file name extension. This has been saved in the correct path, and so now in the console window we can use import module to import the module into the shell. We can immediately access the functions from that module, such as asking for help. Notice that the comment-based help creates a display similar to the help you would see for a commandlet, even with the ability to break examples out into a separate section. In its simplest form, this is all you need to do to create a script module. Rename the file to have the correct name and extension, and put it in one of the official module folders. Now, we'll use Remove Module to unload the module from the shell. By reviewing the shell's function drive, we can see that the functions in the script module are no longer available. Script modules can do more than just provide an easier way of distributing a script. For example, you may create a script module that includes internal or private functions. Your intent with these is that you need to use them from within other functions in the script module, but you do not want them exposed to users who import the module into their shell. For ease of use, the import module commandlet normally exposes everything within the script module. However, by using the export module member commandlet within your script module, you can control the items that are exposed when the module is imported. Anything not explicitly exported will not be exposed, but will still be available internally within the module itself. You can also create a manifest for your module. Manifests are XML files with a file name that consists of the module name and a PSD1 file name extension. The manifest lists not only your script module, but can also list other supporting files including formatting views, that must be loaded along with your module. Create a new manifest file by using the new module manifest commandlet, and then customize the manifest to list the necessary files. Read the help for that commandlet to learn more. This module has a function that is intended only for internal use. If we switch to the console window and import this module, we can then look at the shell's function drive and see that that internal function is indeed exposed. Let's remove the module from memory and revisit the module in our script editor. By adding calls to export module member, we are telling the shell to only expose those elements that we explicitly export. We won't explicitly export our internal private function. Instead, we'll export the function we want to be seen, and we'll define and export an alias for it as well. We'll save those changes, and then go back to the console window. Back in the console, we'll export that module again. This time, when we examine the function drive, we can see that only our designated function is available. The other function is hanging around in memory, but we can't access it directly. It's only available to the other functions that were defined within the same script module. If we ask for help on our function's alias, the help works because the alias was exported into the shell and is tied to the function that is publicly visible. Using script modules, you can share even highly complex scripts that contain multiple functions, aliases, and so forth. By deciding which of those you want to expose, you can help users of your module focus on the pieces of functionality that you intended for them to use.